Hello everyone and welcome back to another step-by-step -step repair video. Today we have a 2012 Chevrolet Cruze with the 1.8 naturally aspirated engine. What we're going to cover today is the thermostat housing replacement. The reason we're replacing the thermostat housing on this vehicle is for a couple things. First, the check engine light is on and we have a code P0599 stored in the engine control module. Secondly, and this is the most noticeable symptom, the cooling fan is very loud even when the engine hasn't warmed up yet. This is an extremely common issue on the Chevrolet Cruze. Fortunately, it's a pretty straightforward and simple repair, but bear with me for a minute and I'll explain to you how this works. The powertrain control module, or the engine's computer basically, controls the thermostat on this vehicle with a heater. The heater is responsible for heating the coolant surrounding the thermostat. This causes the thermostat to open, which allows coolant to flow through the thermostat and cool the engine accordingly. The problem that causes the check engine light to illuminate with the P0599 code and the cooling fan to run at full speed is the engine coolant thermostat heater encounters a problem. Generally, you get a high circuit code, which means that the thermostat heater is no longer functioning properly. Therefore, it cannot control the thermostat via the powertrain control module. Technically, the only part that needs to be replaced is the thermostat, which you see here in these photos. But because this is a higher mileage vehicle and the plastic housing tends to leak, I'm going to replace the entire thermostat and housing assembly with a GM AC Delco part. One of the first things you'll notice on the thermostat housing is they have a different type of bolt that is used. These are called inverted torques. But don't worry, because these bolts are in very low torque settings, you can use an 8mm or a 5 16 socket to remove these inverted Torx bolts. As always, before beginning any cooling system repair, make sure the engine is cool. Place a drain pan underneath the engine to catch the coolant. Make sure you can see your drain pan through the top of the engine here. We're going to start by removing the coolant reservoir cap, place it off to the side, and we're going to get all the electrical connectors out of the way. The oxygen sensor, as you see here, has plastic fittings on it that break very easily. A lot of times other shops will repair this with zip ties. So get those zip ties out of the way if they're on there. And move the harness out of the way by squeezing the little plastic clip and remove it from the metal retainer. Then we're going to disconnect the thermostat heater, the camshaft position sensors. We're going to get both of those out of the way just to make it easier to work on. We'll disconnect the engine coolant temperature sensor as well and get all these electrical connectors and wires out of the way so we can easily see the thermostat. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the nut that holds this metal bracket in place and get it out of the way. And a small flat head screwdriver helps in loosening this top fitting here to get this coolant line off the top of the thermostat. Just be careful not to break it. A little bit of working with it and it'll slide off. Next, we're going to use a pair of pliers and disconnect the upper radiator hose from the thermostat. You might have to twist the hose a little bit back and forth to get it to slide off the thermostat outlet. And then we're going to disconnect the heater core lines. Using the pliers, slide the hose clamps back, and then wiggle the heater core hoses back and forth and slide them off the thermostat outlets. The bottom one can be a little bit more challenging you may want to use your pliers to loosen the rubber hose from the thermostat outlet. You'll notice that this thermostat housing is aluminum, but the AC Delco part is plastic. I'll go into why I use the AC Delco part rather than an aftermarket aluminum one. Using the new thermostat, you can figure out where the six bolts are that you will need to remove in order to take out the old thermostat housing. There's two on the top, two on the bottom, and two on the front of the thermostat housing that you will have to remove to get it loose. We'll start with removing the front two here. We're going to take these two bolts out. There's one on the left and one on the right. These two bolts hold the coolant pipe to the bottom of the thermostat. This goes to your oil cooler. 
Now once you take these bolts loose, you'll notice the pipe will be a little bit loose there. That's normal, don't worry about it, it'll still seal fine. Next we're going to take the four bolts off of the thermostat housing that attach it to the cylinder head. There's two on the top, two on the bottom. These bolts are a little bit longer than the first two re we removed. Now follow the camera down here along the side of the cylinder head and you'll be able to see where these other two bolts are. It may take a little bit of working around to figure out how to get to these. You might need different size extensions, maybe a mirror to see in there clearly. I just used my phone. It actually worked pretty well. Once you've got all the bolts out, the thermostat housing comes right out. As you can see, here's the old thermostat housing. It's got the housing on the right and the thermostat itself is on the left. And this is a part that we will be replacing. It's pretty much all inclusive if you get the whole thing. Next, we're going to take a piece of Scotch-Brite or equivalent and clean the mating surface on the cylinder head where it seals to the thermostat housing. This is really important. You want to make sure you get a clean surface. Also going to remove the rubber seal on the end of this pipe here. It's a good idea to replace this rubber seal as well while you're at it. So we'll install the new rubber seal onto the end of this pipe here. And after we've made sure it's a clean surface on the cylinder head, we'll install the thermostat housing. I'm going to start with the two bolts on the top. Always, always start these bolts by hand to make sure they're not cross-threading. Once we've got them started, we're going to put the other two in. So we've got our thermostat housing secured. Again, there's two on the bottom, two on the top, as you can see here. Once they're started by hand, we're going to snug them up with the ratchet wrench. There's no need to get these extremely tight. Remember, this is a plastic housing. You can't get it too tight. Then we're going to position the coolant pipe going to the oil cooler in place. Again, start them by hand. Make sure they thread in properly. And then snug them up with the ratchet wrench. Again, not too tight. The spec on these is about 71 inch pounds, in case anyone is wondering. It's not much at all. Now we're going to reconnect the heater core lines. Start with the bottom heater core hose and then install the top one. It just makes it easier to get to. Make sure you slide your hose clamps up and secure those as well. Then we're going to attach the radiator hose. Same thing. Slide it onto the thermostat housing and then slide your clamp up. Make sure it secures properly to prevent any leaks. Then we're going to reinstall the bracket onto the side of the thermostat housing. Reinstall the 10 millimeter nut and tighten it by hand. And reinstall this upper coolant line. Push it firmly until you hear a little snap. We're going to reconnect the oxygen sensor, the camshaft position sensors, the coolant thermostat heater connector, and the engine coolant temperature sensor connector. Again, if you have an oxygen sensor, with a broken retainer clip here. You can use a couple zip ties to secure the oxygen sensor and keep it connected. It's just a plastic part. They get brittle and break. So you can use these zip ties to help keep that in place and keep it from becoming disconnected. Then we're going to fill the coolant reservoir with coolant. Once it's filled up, give it a few minutes for the air to purge from the system and then top it off again. I like to fill it up just about to the top, about a half inch from the top of the reservoir. Then we'll remove the drain pan from underneath the vehicle, dispose of the coolant properly. Next we're going to turn the ignition on, and if you have a scan tool, go ahead and clear the code while you're at it, and then start the car and make sure there are no warning lights. Check for codes. Make sure no codes have reset. After the engine has run for a few minutes, go ahead and top the coolant off again after it's purged all the air from the system. You may see a few bubbles come up. This is normal. Go ahead and reinstall the radiator surge tank cap or coolant reservoir cap. And before you heat the engine up, take a garden hose or some water and clean off the area which you worked on. That way you don't have any burning coolant smells or any odors that come from this and it's also easier to tell if you've got any leaks because the water will evaporate quickly but the coolant will not. After you've cleaned it off start the engine and navigate to your engine coolant temperature reading on the dash 
and increase the engine speed with the transmission in park up to 4,000 RPM. Monitor your coolant temperature. You want to make sure that the engine does not overheat. The coolant temperature will climb to approximately 230 degrees Fahrenheit, but should not get any hotter than that before it starts to cool down again. You'll notice the engine temperature on this car reached about 228, and the thermostat opens and it begins to cool the engine back down again. This is normal operation. These engines run a little bit on the warm side when they're sitting and idling. This is normal. The temperature should then drop down to about 190 degrees. You'll also notice the cooling fan will kick on and there will be warm air coming from the radiator. This is a good sign that the cooling system is functioning properly. After the engine has reached normal operating temperature, check for leaks. You're going to want to look around all the fittings that we had apart earlier, look around the hoses, look around the radiator surge tank or the coolant reservoir, and make sure that there are no leaks. You want to look for coolant dripping from these hoses, and also look for coolant dripping onto the ground from areas that you might not be able to see under the hood. Once you've checked for leaks, squeeze the upper radiator hose. It should have some pressure on it, indicating the cooling system is pressurized and sealing properly. Check your coolant level, make sure it's good, and check the operation of the radiator fan. Make sure that it is operating normally and cooling as it should. And that's pretty much it. That's all that's to it. Again, it's a pretty straightforward and simple repair. I've done dozens of these thermostat replacements under warranty, both the thermostat replacement itself and the entire housing. It's a really easy job. It's easy to do yourself. You can save some money. And as I mentioned earlier, I would explain why I use the plastic thermostat housing from GM rather than an aftermarket aluminum one. The reason being is because the owner of this vehicle has had three aftermarket thermostat housings put on this vehicle and they have either leaked or set trouble codes for a bad thermostat heater or engine coolant temperature sensor. We decided to use the AC Delco part and see if we have any better luck with this. Yes, it is a plastic housing and yes, it may be a little bit more prone to leak, but like I said, he's already put three aftermarket ones on this one and we haven't had any luck with it. So we're gonna see how the GM part does. Some of you also might be wondering why I used green coolant instead of the orange Dex Cool, and that's simply because that's what was in the vehicle when I got it and I didn't want to mix the coolant types. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable and helpful. If you did, leave it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video.